Blood on the Bayous is supported in part by Dr. B.B. Trotter from Abilene, Texas, and the Fort Butler Foundation. Thank you. I'm Don Frazier, and we're continuing our series on the Civil War in Texas and Louisiana. Well, now the Federals are on the Texas coast. They have scouted Sabine Pass, and they've occupied the city of Galveston. So this sends a thrill down the spines of Texas Unionists, because they're still looking for a way out and away from what they consider Confederate terrorism. Uh, there's two routes for them. Some hope they can get to Louisiana, maybe via Mexico. Others are looking north towards Kansas and hoping that perhaps Union troops will come through the Indian Territory into North Texas. Well, the arrival of Federals on the Texas coast gives them a third option. Maybe all they have to do is get down to Galveston. Now, North Texas was a portion of the state that was decidedly pro-Union in the secession referendum. When those votes were held, North Texas counties tended to be unionist. And so they're leaning more towards the idea that Kansans will come down and save them. Well, these guys form union leagues. They send letters to Jefferson Davis saying that they should be exempted since they don't support the Confederacy. But all that does is put a target on their back. The commander of the District of Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona, Paul O. A. Bear, uh, essentially uses a very hard hand to suppress any sort of unionist. The fact that these guys thought that they could have a reasonable conversation with the Confederate government about their unionist proclivities uh, was a miscalculation of a colossal grandeur. Uh, on October 1st, there is a general roundup of unionists in North Texas, but especially around the small town of Gainesville. Eventually, 200 men are put into confinement. They're locked up, thrown in county jails, kept under close arrest. And eventually, 45 of these guys will be hanged or shot in one of the largest mass executions slash lynchings in American history. Uh, clearly, if you're a unionist in Texas, you still had better mind your manners because the Confederates will seek you out and they will make life very, very difficult. Eventually, Paulo Hebert, the CSA commander in Texas, is relieved of command because of his heavy-handed tactics, not only in North Texas, but, I mean, for several months. Uh, he goes away, and he will end up uh, surfacing again in northern Louisiana and Monroe, back in his home state. But who replaces Paulo Hebert? It's an interesting choice. It's General John Bankhead Magruder, late of the Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, he was one of Robert E. Lee's generals. Robert E. Lee and he had a falling out, and so Magruder found himself heading towards Texas. He comes in, sets up his headquarters in Houston, and tells everybody he is going to save the day and make sure that Texas remains a vital portion of the Confederate States of America. 